the regular meeting of the Central Berkshire Regional School District on January 23rd, 2020 will now come to order. This meeting is being audio and videotaped. <laughs> if anyone in the audience is taping, kindly let us know. Okay. So all who are able, would you please stand for the pledge. Oh, okay, there's a visible one there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. sure that the popular vote remains. So I'm not sure what has been submitted to DESE. There's been no communication to the select board of what the amendment status is. Um, and we're, again, we're very concerned. So we're asking our Dalton School Committee members to lean in, get a motion on the table to re-vote on that topic. Okay, thank you. Okay. <coughs> Any student affairs.
also today sophomores that were in the class rank are looking to come up during lunch in the B Hall lobby. And along with the end of this week, students will receive their quarter two report cards. And next week, many students are anticipating a virtual red and cell dentist, which is meant for ninth graders that are um, looking to apply to a for next year. Thank you so much. Uh, secretary's report. Oh, I'm sorry, any questions for, for Faith? Before we move on? Oh, thank you, Faith. Uh, Secretary's report. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 9th meeting? Okay. <coughs> we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh. Uh, there are some corrections. <laughs> okay. We didn't even get to discussion. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um. on page 71, they start on page 71, and first of all, the meeting was held at Nestus, as I recall. This is Jan the January 9th meeting. Is it the phone? It was at the oh, sorry, it was here. Um, six of the seven towns to vote it. So you, it's pretty easy for one or two to, to stop it. So it never got very far. The, uh, about the one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs down, it says Member Peters noted that the committee is still waiting for a response from Desi if the agreement made with Dalton and Hinsdale is agreeable. Um, I, I don't want to put words in Rich's mouth, but I don't think that we never had, we have never had a formal meeting with any of the towns. But there have been discussions with individuals from the various towns. Uh, but they didn't, they weren't voted necessarily representatives of their towns. Um, so I would substitute two informal suggestions for amendments. Dealing with, dealing with voting debt. Um, because I wouldn't want to imply that any of the towns that give informal representation to any of the discussions at that point. And that's all I know. But I will be work, better working if you'd like. those changes and so do we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Financial report. Yes, please. Okay. Move to approve warrant number PR 2020-15 dated January 23rd, 2020, amount of $645,397.55. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries. 
motion to approve warrant number PR 2020-15D dated January 23rd, 2020 in the amount of $242,250.86. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries. Motion to approve warrant number AP 2020-16 dated January 24th, 2020 in the amount of $796,587.54. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Motion carries. And motion to approve warrant number APW 2020-12 dated January 24th, 2020 in the amount of $102,374.17. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We also have donations tonight. So, um, gifts and donations, acceptance of a donation from O'Connor Studio. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accept the donation of $635.45 to the Kittredge gift account from O'Connor Studios for portraitures at Kittredge, as recommended by the District Treasurer. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Motion carries. Next one is an acceptance of a donation in memory of Martin Phillips. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accept the donation of $500 in memory of Martin Phillips to the General Scholarship Fund as recommended by the District Treasurer. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next one is acceptance of a donation to the Peter Simony Memorial Scholarship. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accept the donation of $1,000 to the Peter Simony Memorial Scholarship Fund as recommended by the District Treasurer. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Communication from the Chair. Just that we still have the Town of Washington School Committee vacancy, so please, I urge you, if you know of anybody, please let us know. Thank you. Our subcommittee reports and recommendations. Curriculum, well, we met tonight, and we, um, we learned about instructional rounds. Uh, Aaron Rock, Sean Therrien, and Leslie Glenn Davis gave us a wonderful presentation about something new that's happening at Wakona, and hopefully it will be uh, implemented at the, the, the principals will be trained next year, all the K through H principals. But right now, um, Aaron has been trained, and Sean and Leslie, they're working with, um, at a Harvard University program. It's now in East Boston, and they're learning a lot from their visits to East Boston. And they have someone named Stephanie, thank you, <coughs> who is um, helping them, and uh, she is the consultant. And it's really an exciting program because teachers are working with teachers <coughs> across curriculum areas to go into the classrooms to really help. The purpose of this is to really identify those students who are low performing and find out why. Really have a purpose in finding out what's going on and how we can improve instruction for those children. <coughs> those of you who are at Kirkfield tonight, anybody want to add anything to that? I'd just like to say that when you pointed out East Boston, they made a specific point to tell them how bad that school was and how it was about to be taken over by the state and how they've improved themselves over the six years of grown growth. So we've kind of tied in to a good situation. Right, thank you for having me. Anything else, Ellen? Um, they also, we also discussed that this isn't, um, 
something where you find the problem or you think you find the problem, you try to fix it and you're done. It's a process that evolves over time. So you think you found your problem, you try to make adjustments, something else pops up and you just keep going until, um, or you just keep going to make sure that all students are being uh, properly
Um, so we want to be very involved in the annual town meetings. Um, this will be the first time that Lori and Greg have presented the budget to the town. So at a minimum, the finance members should be available at the annual town meetings to defend and explain the budget. But I would also say that every, uh, to all my colleagues here, and for those who have not participated in an annual town meeting, it's very important that you know every vote counts. Um, sometimes you have less people who show up. Sometimes you have more people who show up. Um, but this school budget um, does have to pass by five of the seven member towns. And so it's very important that, you know, as part of the school committee, we support um, the budget. So if that's possible. Um, and we should be very careful about saying anything publicly uh, that is not correct information. Uh, the budget includes contingencies for uh, the unknown. Um, on January 27th of 2020, the Berkshire Health Group sets the rate for the health insurance, um, for the health insurance, and um, Greg Buono indicated that he doesn't expect it to be more than 1% of an increase. So we'll know more after that date. Uh, the town assessments in the initial budget indicate a 3.31 increase, um, and um, comments were made that this would potentially be a tough sell to the towns, uh, so we'd like to work to try to lower those assessments. One of the uh, line items is $250,000 in student services for special education students that attend school out of the district but may reside in the district or have parents who reside in the district. And the um, administration has no control over these costs. Um, in addition, the cost per student for those students um, has increased to $20,000 per student. So again, it's something that the administration has no control over. Um, we also talked about the budget book. And this is a document that's handed out at the annual town meetings sent to the towns, and it's really a synopsis of the budget. Um, and uh, we discussed that it should include the number of school choice students for each town, and should also show the OPEF balance as of a specific date. Um, and also that the full-time equivalents uh, should be explained as well. Governor Baker's budget is was due out on January 22nd. Um, so that will impact our budget um, under the Chapter 70 money. Um, the Finance Subcommittee also asked Greg to verify that the school building expenses are approved by Skanska, which he was going to verify for us. And um, the decision, um, Desi's decision on the voting method may impact annual town meetings as well. The Dalton and Hinsdale Select Boards have invited the administration to their meetings. Dalton is January 27th. Hinsdale is February 25th. Um, our next meeting for the Finance Subcommittee will be February 4th at 5.30 at the Central Office, and we'll be discussing the tentative budget. That's all I have, unless anyone from the subcommittee has anything else. Just a quick note on that for the January 27th Dalton meeting. If you want to do that, we need to know pretty soon so we can put it on the agenda. So not violate an open meeting law. So. Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, we're I'll, yes. I'll text Bob. I just sent an email. Yes, we're in. I should have gone very directly to you. Yes, we are a yes. Okay. Mark yeah. that as a yes. Okay. It works for you. Okay, perfect. That's it, honey. Yes, that's it. We have the next meeting schedule. Yes, the next meeting is um, the 4th of February at 5.30 at the central office. We'll be discussing the tentative budget. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, policy. Well, we haven't met. We're tentatively, we're planning to meet on the 4th, so we're going to have to change that or go afterwards. Okay, thank you. And personnel. Uh, I have no report. And safety and wellness, we, well, we talked about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, we talked about it when we had a 
uh, meeting of all the chairs of the subcommittees, and we talked about how since its inception, other things have come into play that um, sort of overlap. So our equity and diversity committee is really taking charge with some of the issues that were uh, initially presented to us, and um, curriculum also, and policy. So we're at this point considering asking policy to amend policy that would eliminate safety and wellness committee. But we're still working out details of it, okay? So we'll let you know. We'll call the building project. Well, it's been, uh, it's had not a lot's happened in the last two weeks since uh, we had our, had our bi weekly meeting yesterday. I just, I guess the only thing I would bring up is uh, just to mention, I'm not sure if it was mentioned last meeting or not, but there is a color committee that's been selected. And uh, it doesn't include engineers like me, it includes art teachers and things like that. So <laughs> to pick the colors, they're, they're not going to be active for quite a while yet. There's also going to be an FF in the, uh, the, the furniture committee that'll have to be convened in, in the near future. Um, but again, that's the, the activity of that is, is a way to go off. Um, there was some public, uh, 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 I want to say, concern about the elevator at Takai. So I just wanted to say, you know, on, on the meeting here that uh, that was addressed with the uh, building committee and the, uh, the architect as well to make sure that what transpired, the kind of doesn't transpire here. It seems there was a little bit of uh, misinformation, um, but regardless, everybody's aware of the situation and um, there's, there's a different, uh, the, the folks that put the elevator in there, or built the elevator in there, so kind of isn't even in the bidding process. So if there's concern about that particular vendor, that, that they weren't in the bidding process. So just wanted to make sure that was addressed publicly. And, uh, that's it. May I just add that um, the issue about the elevator, I uh, received a, an email that explained that um, the malfunction of the elevator was actually ruled um, determined to be that too many people were on the elevator trying to resuscitate the teacher with a stricken, which caused, as, as a built-in safety feature to the elevator, the elevator stopped because it was over limit. Um, so it wasn't a, you know, a faulty elevator, it was designed to do that. And uh, we applaud the people that tried to help the teacher, but apparently too many people were on the elevator.
mistreatment, those kinds of things, because we, we do continue to have issues, I think, as, as all school systems and places of employment and everyone are, um, but we're just, we're persevering with the work, and I think that's what's most important. We're not putting it on the shelf. It's not something we did last year in response to an incident. It's just what we do now. Um, so we have confirmed for Dr. Tatum, which is extremely exciting, to keynote our opening day next year. I'll be talking about that more and more as that comes closer, because um, that's a partnership with Multicultural Bridge. We would not be able to bring Dr. Tatum to the community um, on our own, but Multicultural Bridge came to the table and said, we'd really like to partner with you to do this, um, to, to contribute towards the cost, uh, but also to have the race task force be here on that day, um, as well as our equity and diversity steering committee. Um, school committee members obviously will be invited, and our entire staff. So um, we are going to really try and get as many people as possible to read the book, um, at a minimum to read the preface of the book that really describes how, how little change has actually happened in the past 20 years um, around um, uh, issues of race. So um, that is something we are, are really looking forward to and we want to do well because we are thrilled to have the opportunity to have her here. She's actually from Bridgewater. I think she, she I believe was born in Florida, but was raised in Bridgewater, which is a, a small town in Eastern Mass. So she was interested in coming here to Berkshire County knowing some of the complexities we, we have. Um, so um, I wanted to keep that on your agenda. August 31st feels uh, a decent amount of time away, but if you, uh, if you mark it off and you can be here, I think it'll certainly be worthwhile. Um, Elementary math nights, there is actually still one more. They've been very successful. Uh, Liz Jackson is a math interventionist now between Kittredge and Beckett. We also have, also have a math interventionist, Bethany Haymeyer in Craneville. Um, them with our instructional coach, our principals, our assistant superintendent, um, Leslie, um, have organized really family math nights to really celebrate our new math curriculum and help parents to understand how to support their students at home and to see the math that's happening in the classrooms. They've been very well attended, so um, I think that's always something to kind of note what is getting families out because families are busy and we've, we've had things that haven't had great attendance and these have been very well attended. Um, so clearly people are really interested in, in the curriculum and the work that students are doing in the classroom. Um, so we're going to continue to do those with a literacy night as well. Um, we're also trying to balance, you know, there's so much focus on the standards and on, um, on curriculum and on, um, you know, statewide assessment. but. Um, both Kittredge and Wakona have um, done these kind of uh, academic field day, per se, where, where there's really an opportunity for um, kids and, and, and staff to build relationships and areas of interest. Um, and they've been extremely successful. So Kittredge was extremely successful, and Wakona has um, got a lot of excitement already around the model they're going to do. So actually, it probably make no sense if, if they tell us about it when it happens. I think it's in April. So I don't know how much students know about it yet, but this is kind of letting you know about the, the model that um, Mr. Rob is using. Similar model that Kathy Buckley used at Kittredge. Um, the only other things I do want to actually, we probably will get to it at the end, but I don't want to forget. Um, I do just want to know we do have two retirements that are that are in this packet that are, are people who have been with us for quite some time. I can't tell you, Craneville, well over 30 years, um, and Madge Baker, who is a math teacher at the middle school, well known to many people. Um, so we will certainly miss, miss them, but I did want to make note of those retirements given the length of service. Um, that's really all I have. Uh, the governor's budget did come out. Um, you can look at the cherry sheet online. Um, our numbers right now do, so, do show a small increase. Um, a lot of that is primarily due to the fact that, um, that our school choice money coming in was significantly higher in the, the assessment right now um, than it was originally. So that, that really kind of evened out some dips in regional transportation and it overall left us in the positive. But we know those are the numbers that will continue to be to be worked with. Um, we're still waiting on information about the Student Opportunity Act. Um, we have been told that there will be a short form. Short form means you're not getting that much money. Um, long, <laughs> long form, as, as Leslie and her counterpart in Pittsfield, in Pittsfield we're, we're learning about today, long form means you are getting a lot of money. Uh, Leslie's friend will be getting a long form. <laughs> uh, in Pittsfield, we're going to be getting short form. So we, which I don't think uh, it's something we didn't expect, you know, that the Student Opportunity Act a lot of is really, really driven towards some of the, the most socioeconomically challenged districts in the state. Um, but we don't know what that means yet. Um, and we do know that we're going to have to bring this forward and have some opportunity for, for public participation. Um, a lot of people are talking about their public hearings for their budget. But I will be giving you more information about that as it comes out, because we do know that um, there'll be a template, there'll be forms. We have to have some targets, some metrics to measure ourselves against um, in a process. It'll be a quick process, because it's due to the state April 1st. So school committee will vote on it in March. Um, we will have to have some public opportunity participation in February, but we, we really, honestly, the big, the big question in the room is, well, how much money are we getting? Right, that's a, that's a huge factor for us, you know, what, what this is going to look like and what we can do. Um, we'll, we'll drive how much conversation really um, makes sense. 
So we will continue to update you on that. I think because we have a, a gap now between meetings, we'll have a lot more information in February. So that's all I have, unless people have any questions. Sorry, again. you mentioned Seven Town Advisory Committee in February? Yes, February 25th. Yes. yes. February 25th. Time, location? We haven't received notification of that. Just, just plan, so we're going to post that at 7. It will be 6 p.m. here in the Nesca's library. Okay. Product of the press. <clears throat> okay. That takes us to.